Hi, I'm Eric Paquette, an automation engineer at Kendall Electric, based out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. It is my pleasure today to talk to you about the differences between the Compact Logic's 5370 and 5380 controllers from Rockwell Automation. I often get asked what are the differences between the two, which one should I use for my project, is one better than the other, and so on. I'll be answering these questions and more, and by the end of this video, you'll be able to decide which one fits your needs the best. So let's take a look at the two families. You'll see the 5370 here on the left and the 5380 on the right. Both of the controller series are active products, meaning we're selling both of them and there's no plans to get rid of one or the other. Uh, historically, when a new controller comes out, it replaces the old controller, but that's not really the case here. So why is it then that we have two different controllers? And the answer is performance. The 5370 has a single core CPU and is considered our standard performance controller, whereas the 5380 has a multiple core CPU and can perform many times faster than the 5370. This is why we call the 5380 our high performance controller. I'll explain this further in some later slides. Let's take a look at the 5370 family first. The 5370 controller part numbers all begin with 1769. This is what Rockwell calls a bulletin number. It's the part number beginning, 1769. So in this family, we actually have three different styles of controllers, which we commonly refer to as the L1, L2, and L3 series, but they're all part of the 5370 family. So the reason we call them L1 and L2 and L3 is that those designations are actually a part of the part number. And we'll further quantify that by maybe calling the L1 family an L16, an L18, L19, and that pretty much identifies what controller we're talking about. The same holds true in the L2 and the L3 series, so you might hear us refer to them as an L24 or an L30 or L36, for example. Typically, the larger the number, the more capability the controller has in terms of memory, supported I.O., and motion axes. When looking at the 5380 family, there's a little more consistency. These part numbers all begin with the bulletin number 5069, um, but there's really no subdivisions like there is in the 5370 family. We actually still use a shorthand method of referring to them. Uh, the only difference here is that we'll use three digits instead of two after the L. So in this case, you'll hear us using terms like the L306 or L320 or L360, for example. So just like the 5370 family, the larger the number, the more capability it has, again, in terms of memory, I.O., and motion capability. So one of the first differences you'll notice when looking at the two controllers is that the local I.O. structure is different. The local I.O. is the I.O. attached directly to the right-hand side of the processor. And the 5370 uses either 1734 point I.O. in the case of the L1 or 1769 compact I.O. in the case of the L2 and the L3 series. The 5380, on the other hand, uses a totally new I.O. structure designed specifically for higher performance applications, and it's called the 5069 compact I.O. So this gives us a really fast screw-to-screw -screw throughput. That is to say, from the time an input is sensed on, we can turn on an output within less than a millisecond. Another difference you'll notice is that the L3 series of the 5370 controllers have a separate power supply. So the 5380 has a built-in power supply. The power supply is not only provide power to the controller itself, but also to the attached local I.O. So when you're doing a price comparison between the two, make sure you include the controller and the power supply in the 5370 family to give you an equivalent 5380 system. So let's take a look at communications now. If you look at both controllers, you'll notice they have a USB port on the front for getting connected to your PC. Which, by the way, if you haven't used the USB as a programming port to get connected, I'd highly recommend it. But they both also have two Ethernet ports. There are some big differences between them, though. The 5370 family has two Ethernet ports, but it only has the capability of having one IP address. If you want multiple IP addresses on it, you'd have to use a device such as Rockwell's Stratix 1783 NAT-R, so you can do network address translation. Also, 
the 5370 has 10 100 megabit ports. On the 5380 family, the ports are 1 gigabit with a dedicated CPU to handle all the communications over Ethernet. So this means you can get much more throughput and capability, especially when it comes to things like servos or Ethernet uh, SIP motion devices. Or if you simply need higher throughput because you have a large amount of I.O., distributed I.O., with very fast update times, RPIs. Another advantage of the 5380 Ethernet ports is they can be configured in a dual IP mode, meaning the controller can actually have two IP addresses and it can be connected to two different subnets at the same time. So you could have your machine on one subnet and your plant on another and have them both connected and uh, you wouldn't need any additional hardware that way. So one last thing I'd like to mention deals with the distributed I.O. Both the 5370 and the 5380 have the capability to control I.O. over Ethernet and also both of the compact I.O. structures allow Ethernet adapters to be connected to them. So 5069 and 1769 I.O. have the ability to be used as distributed I.O. The 5380 processor can control either the 5069 high performance I.O. or it can also control the 1769 I.O. if you don't need the high performance or the speed of the 5069. You can mix and match and control both, it's not a problem. The 5370 processor, on the other hand, only can control the 1769 I.O. remotely. You can't hook up the 5069 high performance I.O. to the 5370 processor. And it makes sense if you think about it because if you need the higher performance of the faster I.O., more than likely you're going to need a faster processor as well. Thank you for watching today's video. If you'd like more information on today's topic, please contact your Kendall Electric account manager or automation specialist. You can also visit our website at kendallelectric.com to find the location nearest you. Stay connected with us by subscribing to our YouTube channel or following us on Facebook or LinkedIn. Thanks, and see you on the next Kendall Quick Connection video.